Welcome back to the masterclass on understanding why vowels go where they go. I'll put a link in the description box below to the playlist that has all the other videos in this series. Feel free to go watch all of those other videos. In this video, I'll be covering backhand volleys up here on the kitchen line and understanding why vowels go where they go. I'll cover three things in the video today. First one is understanding that every ball that comes at you has a place it naturally wants you to hit it. And if we'll hit the ball in that direction, our game will be pretty easy. So I'll talk about how to understand what that is, and then we'll drill it so we can get some practice on hitting the ball in the direction that it wants to go. Second thing I'll cover is how to redirect that ball. What if I don't want to hit that ball in the direction that it wants to go? What do I have to do? We'll discuss that and we'll drill that and understand what we have to do to make that ball want to go in a different direction. Third thing I'll talk about is the ability to diagnose why a ball went where it went. Let's say I hit a ball and it didn't go exactly where I wanted it to go. I need to understand why. What just happened that caused that ball to go where it went, which is not what I wanted. If we can understand that, diagnose it in real time, then we have a chance to fix that shot later in the game. We'll talk about three different situations about where a ball wants to go. First one is this ball comes into my shoulder on my backhand side. I'm in my ready position. I open this paddle up. You can tell this ball wants to go off on this angle off to this corner off to my right. A second condition I'll talk about is when this ball is all the way out to the side, just barely where I can reach it on my backhand side and I have to reach all the way over and hit this ball. In that situation, instead of reaching out in front like I did with my shoulder, I want to have this paddle all the way back out to the side, even with me. If I can do that, this ball wants to go straight away from me, straight down this line or straight down the center of the court if I'm on the other side. The third situation is in between those two, so not all the way out to the side, not into my shoulder, halfway out. So if I'll take my paddle, be out here, and now my paddle is not all the way forward as it was on my shoulder. It's not all the way back even with my body as it was when this ball was far away. I'm splitting the difference so this paddle is halfway in between all the way forward and all the way back even with me. Now one thing that's a little bit different, and we'll go over this, on the backhand side if I'm reaching over here, my arm is actually anchored on the other side of my body. So on my forehand side, I have much more distance I can cover to get this paddle out wider. On the backhand side, not nearly as far. I can't reach nearly as far. And I don't have as much power on this side to swing as I do if my paddle's out here on the forehand side and swing. This backhand side then is different than the forehand side. On the forehand side, I just said bend to the elbow, paddle's out here, all the way out. The paddle's even with my body. On my backhand side, I have less reach. I may have to move more. And if I kept my paddle out to the side of my body, I don't have a lot of power. I can't generate a very forceful swing. How we fix that is dropping this foot back on this 45 degree angle. If this ball's coming in the bend of my elbow, now I have some room to swing. My shoulder is closer over here to this ball. Ball's coming further out. Now I drop this ball foot all the way back and I can tell the angle of my paddle, this ball wants to go straight down the line. My reach is still not quite there. I may need to move over a little bit, but then I've got room to swing and this ball wants to go straight down the line. I will demonstrate all of those techniques as we do this drill. First position we're gonna look at is these balls coming in into my backhand side shoulder. I'm in my ready position. Paddle's gonna be out in front. This ball naturally wants to go to that corner off to my right. Let's take a look. Here we go. In my ready position, ball comes into my shoulder, keeping my paddle out in front. This ball naturally wants to go off to that corner. So as I swing, I want to have my paddle continue on toward that corner, toward that target. And that should be where that ball naturally wants to go. As I talked about in the previous video, if I control the top edge of my paddle, that controls whether that ball floats or whether that ball goes on a straight line or like that if I dump it in the net. If that top edge is too far forward, I'll hit one with the top edge back a little bit. You can tell this ball floats up. Do it again. So the top edge is too far back. If I will, oh, that was too far forward. Overcorrected it a little bit there. All right, I'm trying to keep my non-paddle hand, my left hand on the back of this paddle to help me swing so I can push a little bit with it. Key thing that it does, it tells me where this paddle is and I know 
I can feel this paddle better in 3D space and hopefully hit this shot a little bit better. I was late on that one. All right. If I don't keep my left hand on the back of the paddle, the only information I have is from my grip here. So I don't have as much information about where this paddle is in space. It's much harder to hit that ball well than if I will bring this non-paddle hand forward with my paddle. It gives me a little bit of shoulder rotation, a little bit of stability. I need to concentrate better than that here. And I can get this ball going because I'm feeling where this paddle is. Oh, that wasn't very good. That's better. That's better. That's better. All right, so that's good. All right, we're gonna look at that second position now where the ball is out a little bit wider. If you have trouble generating power, it may be difficult to do that if the ball is out here. So I recommend taking this non-paddle side of the body, this foot dropping it back on this 45 degree angle giving me some room to swing. So instead of being here and swinging at this ball, I wanna drop this back and that gives me a little bit more room to swing. Now to compensate for me dropping this back, I have to be a little bit further this way just to get that ball to go down the middle of the court. So as on the first shot, this ball was coming into my shoulder, if I want it to go down the middle of the court, I might wanna drop this back. That paddle's naturally gonna to wanna to send that ball down toward the middle of the court. If I can do that well, here we go. I floated that one terribly. All right, that's better. A little bit early. All right, that's better. Right down to the middle. So I'm standing where I'm squared up to the net here because I don't have too much trouble generating power. But now, if you wanted to do this, you could drop this foot back on this 45 degree angle and give yourself more room to swing. So now I've got more room for my paddle to swing. And let me put a little shoulder rotation into this and generate a little bit of power. So this foot's back off the line. I'm standing sideways to this. And this allows me to get more swing. So like everything else, I'm trying to continue on with my paddle toward that target after I hit. Trying to exhale every time I hit, stay relaxed, watching that ball all the way into my paddle. Trying to keep my left hand on the back side of this paddle. The longer I can do that, the more information I have about where this paddle is in space. And I should be able to hit this ball better. Didn't hit that one well. That one's better. Exhale a little bit and focus here. Ball should naturally want to go down the middle of that court. So I'll come back to where now I'm square up to this net. Same thing. Ball's out a little bit wide, but I can generate my own power. So I'm okay standing here like this, or I can drop this foot back, be over a little bit closer to this ball. And now that ball wants to go down the middle of that court. So drill that, practice that. If I can get my machine turned off, drill that and practice that until that becomes normal. And you may want to practice both where I'm square to this net as I'm hitting these, letting this ball be out to the side a little bit. Ball's out here. And then also practice dropping this foot back a little bit, being a little bit closer. Now I want this ball to go down the middle of the court. So I've got two opponents back. I want to put this ball between them. Here's how we do that. All right, third position I'll talk about is where this ball's way out wide. Now, if I'm reaching over this far, a lot of people aren't going to have enough power to put much pace on this ball. So I will demonstrate hitting this way, and I will also demonstrate dropping this foot back. And I may need to slide this way a little bit more to compensate for that lack of reach when I drop that foot back. Let's take a look. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, so this ball is coming out wide. I'm going to reposition here a little bit. And this ball should want to go straight down this line. So if it's out to the side of my body, my paddle should be back even with my body. Pay attention here, I'll do a little bit better. All right, so this ball's way out to the side, paddle's back even with my body. When I hit, this ball naturally wants to go down this line. Now, if I can't generate much power, I can take this foot on my non-paddle side, drop it back, give me some room to swing, and then generate a little bit more power this way. Still want to continue on with my paddle going toward the target. 
exhale while I hit. Look, that ball all the way into my paddle. Things should go pretty well. So this is where this ball naturally wants to go. If I can understand that and see this in a game when that ball is coming, I don't have to overthink this too much. I already know where this ball wants to go and if that's where I want to hit that ball, then that works pretty well. All right, now we know where that ball naturally wants to go. It comes in my shoulder, paddle out in front, wants to go off to, on this angle over to the corner. Ball is a little bit further out wide. I don't have my paddle as far out in front. It wants to go to the center of the court. Ball's out even further. I have this paddle even with my body. That ball wants to go straight down that line, straight away from me. Those are good things to know. We need to know where that ball wants to go, where it's begging us to hit it. Now, what if we don't want that ball to go there? What if this ball's out here, kind of halfway, but I want to go to that corner or I want to go down that line? What do we do? How do we fix that? We just did that because we moved. That ball's coming. That ball's going to be on the path it's going to be. If I want to redirect that ball, I want to put my body in a position to where now that ball naturally wants to go off to that corner. It naturally wants to go down that line. It naturally wants to go down the middle. That ball's not going to change its direction. I have to change my relationship to it, how close I am or how far away I am. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to sit here and run this drill and I'm going to hit, try and hit uh, balls in different directions. So I'm going to get set up originally where this ball's coming into the crook of my elbow, but I'm going to redirect it over to that corner meaning I need to slide over a little bit so that I'm closer and get this ball into my shoulder. That was not a good example. That was not either. All right, I'm not doing this well. All right, so that's better. So if I get this ball in my shoulder, it wants to go over there. If I want to go down the middle, I slide away a little bit, get this ball further away. If I want to go down the line, I slide further away or I drop this foot back and get that ball to go down the line. So this ball's coming at me. If I'll crowd this ball, get it on my shoulder, it wants to go in that corner. Ball's gonna come at me. I slide away a little bit, give myself room. Now it wants to go down the middle. I slide away even further. It wants to go down this line. So one good way to practice this is if you have a drilling partner, have them walk around the back of that court, have them walk to a position and stop, and you take three or four or five balls, and try to hit their feet, have them move, and then you focus on trying to hit their feet. So it's pretty early in the morning, I don't have a training partner here with me, but if you can get them to walk around, be on the court and you target their feet, that's more real world-like, more game-like, do that for a basket, and then you guys switch, switch roles. You go walk around the back side of that court, and then you have them aim at your feet, and then sometimes as I'm drilling this for my students, I will come up into no man's land and I will say, make me pay for being in no man's land, trying to get them hit the ball straighter down. So it's at their feet in no man's land. I still want to target their feet. So if I can put this ball shorter in no man's land at their feet, still makes life hard on them. If I'm still trying to go deep with this ball, I may give them a ball they can hit out of the air if they're standing in no man's land. So I'll say, take some speed off that ball drop it right down on their feet in no man's land and practice that way. That's an excellent way to drill. And you can do this with two people. So I'm trying to hit this ball in different directions. Practice this where, I'm, where you're changing up and then grade yourself. It's like I'm trying to go down the middle, how did I do? I'm go, trying to go down the, to the corner, how did I do? Trying to go down the line, how did I do? All right, I was a little bit early on that one, so can I fix that and correct? I did and slow this down a little bit be a little bit later hitting this ball. So second part of that drill is we're changing directions of where we're hitting. So this ball is coming on a path and if I want that ball to go in a different direction then I have to move. Right? I've got to get this ball on my shoulder if I want to go off on this corner. I've got to get it all the way out to the side if I want to go down the line. So if I'm thinking that way then in a game it starts to be more natural. This may seem a lot, like a lot to remember but if we drill this a lot in the game we don't really have to think about it much or overthink it. Ball's coming at me, I want to go at this corner. I know if I slide over and get this right off of my shoulder, that, pat, that ball naturally, easily wants to go in that direction. That's a benefit to me. If I can understand that ahead of time, move my body, change that relationship relative to the ball, get it to go where I want. 
Last thing I'm going to talk about is diagnosis. Like I hit a ball, didn't go exactly where I wanted it to go. I need to understand why. And then I have a chance to fix that roll time in a game. If I can't figure out why, I can't diagnose why that ball went where it went, I'm never going to be able to fix that during a game. And we want to be able to do that. I've got my target basket set up over in the corner. We always need a target that we're uh, trying to hit. We're not just trying to hit balls. We're trying to hit them at a particular place whether that's my partner walking around back there or whether I've got some type of target set up on the court. Uh, I'm going to try and hit these balls at that target and then I'm going to miss some and I'll say why I did. So if I'm really early, this ball's, I'm going to set up so this ball's coming to my shoulder. The earlier I am, the further off on this angle this ball goes. And if you've ever hit these balls and they went out of bounds to the right in this case, you were probably really early. You got there too quick, you got excited, you wanted to hurry up and hit that ball wait for that ball to get where you want it to go. If it goes left of that target, it means I didn't get my paddle there on time. I didn't finish getting all the way around. Now it's gonna go left of that target. If it goes high, I had the tip too far back, goes in the net or goes too short, then I had the tip or the top of my paddle rotated too far forward. So I'm gonna hit some of these, talk through why I miss them, and I'm gonna miss some, I can guarantee you that. All right, here we go. If I can get my machine started. All right. Trying to go to that basket, so that was pretty good, pretty on time, good time, a little bit late on that one. So I try and fix that on the very next shot. So if I make a mistake and I can diagnose that real time, so it late again, I'm gonna try and be a little bit earlier here on this ball and see, okay, so that was better. Maybe a little bit of an overcorrection. That ball was short, so it went really, it bounced in no man's land. That was right on target. So trying to get these all to go over really early on that one, not as bad on that one. A little bit late because I didn't get to the basket. Now these don't have to be perfectly on that basket. That's a tough thing to do. I floated that ball. Tip of my paddle was back so I tried to roll it forward and that next ball went lower. Pretty good shot there. All right, still trying to bring this paddle, non-paddle hand back with my paddle. Pretty good shot there. That was on time. So I'm trying to remember what it feels like when I hit a good ball. I'm not necessarily trying to feel like, remember, what it feels like when I hit a bad ball. I want to throw all of those out of my brain. I'll be really early on a couple of these. So if I'm really early, that ball goes off and out of bounds to the right. If I'm really late, it goes really left uh, where I wanted that to go. On time again, now I'm going back to the basket. So that was pretty good. So as you're hitting these, that was late. That was really late. We need to understand real time. So if I hit this ball late, then in a game, I go, I've got to get my paddle there quicker than I got to that ball. Otherwise, this next one's going to be late. I didn't even hit that ball. Floated that one a bit, so I fixed that by rolling the top edge down, which I did on those two, and those were too low. So I'm always trying to correct and figure out how can I get this ball to go where I want it to go. All right, so I'll float with the top edge back here a little bit. So high and floaty and soft. Let me do that again. So high and floaty and soft, better example. So I don't want to give them that weak ball going. I want this ball to go on a line more like that, although that was a little bit short. That was better, a little bit early, right on target. A little bit late, it went left of the target. Pretty good, a little bit short maybe. And too early and that went out of bounds and along. All right, that's a pretty good example. So if we can diagnose why that ball went where it went. So in the late ones, I go, all right, I know it went left of the target because I was late. Paddle didn't come all the way around. I'll wait till that. Then I know next time I need to get that paddle there a little bit quicker, not be so late. Goes hard on this angle out of bounds. I got there too early, right? I know next time don't be so excited. Wait for that ball to get there. So as you hit these balls, like every ball, if it didn't go exactly where you wanted it to go, think about what did I just do? What did I do to make that ball not go where I wanted it to go? And then try and fix that on the very next shot. The nice thing about drilling is we get that next shot really quick. I don't have to wait for another 10 or 15 minutes or I may not see that shot again all day. So if I'm drilling, I get to do, fix that and try and correct that uh, two or three seconds later as that next ball gets to me. So that's the advantage of drilling. I'm not seeing as many people drill as I used to see a couple of years ago. Not really a good thing. 
So drill this, get this all ingrained, be able to diagnose why that ball went where it went, your game will get better.